Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to Comex AI. Uh, this is uh, this session is AI in agricult agriculture and fisheries. Uh, this is a very important session uh, because agriculture and fisheries um, feature very heavily uh, in Oman's 2040 vision, uh, which will allow for um, uh, a lot of employment, a lot of investment into the sector. Uh, to try to um, uh, increase the performance, to try to increase uh, the amount of revenue uh, that the sector is adding to our economy. Uh, it, has always, it has always been an important sector for the country. So with the tool of AI, uh, which is a new technology, uh, which has now gone from theory into practice, with AI being used across many, uh, uh, many, many several sectors and industries, as you will see from all the different sessions that we have at this uh, COMEX AI conference. We will be discussing with our panel here how AI uh, can be used uh, to help to increase efficiency and productivity uh, in agriculture and fisheries in Oman and beyond. So I would like to introduce our speakers. Uh, here we have Claudia Massey, who is the CEO of Siemens Oman, who will be talking about uh, fish farms. And also Mohammed Arsalan, the, uh, who is a machine learning engineer from IEIN, Bangalore and Muscat, who will be talking about enhancing the, the productivity of agriculture by AI. So uh, again, welcome to the session. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, our speakers will take it from here, after which we will have a Q&A at the end of the session. So uh, I'd like to hand it over to Claudia, who will be our first speaker. Thank you so much, Amr. I hope everyone can see my screen. Can you please yes. give me a thumbs up? Great. Um, so first of all, thank you so much for the invitation. I think it is a, an extremely valid dialogue. Um, I think AI is, uh, is permeating so many of, uh, of our activities in society these days. And as you mentioned, for Oman, fisheries is, uh, is such a key sector and there is so much opportunity to be taken away. And I would like to, to start this by saying like uh, AI, is about optimizing. It's about actually making sure that we use our resources in, in the most um, optimal way, in a way that we explore the most and harming the least, the environment and, uh, and all other stakeholders that are involved in the process. So with that in mind, um, I'll jump directly to the topic of fish farms. And um, Fish farms, we, it's something where Siemens has had some experience talking about automation and control for many years. Uh, notably in, uh, in the Nordics, there is a lot of, in the Nordics, uh, I mean, the north of Europe, uh, Scandinavian region and so on, that's a, a place where uh, labor has extremely high costs. So a lot of the fish farms are automated. And then also when you start looking in, in countries, especially in Asia, where there is more and more um, the, the idea of getting things to be smarter, uh, that's also where we have been extremely active in using our technology. And I'm gonna bring to you today an example where, that we have implemented in Singapore. And without further ado, I would say, let's just jump into it. I'm gonna take you to the deep of a fish tank. So that's what it looks like. And one of the main challenges that you have as a fish tank manager, so to say, is that you should maximize biomass growth and minimize feed costs. So if you're in, the, in fish production, you would know that fish, uh, feeding the fish is actually something that takes about half of your costs. So minimizing this amount is extremely important. And maximizing biomass growth is because at the end, you are going to sell your fish by the weight, right? So if you have bigger fish, fatter fish, it is much better for, for your profits and so on. So this is what a fish tank farm looks like. Uh, and uh, when you are in this environment, like how can you really tell how much mass of fish do you have? Uh, because at the end, if you are managing a business in fisheries, you should have a daily estimation of how many kilos of meat you have in there so that you can really uh, estimate how much revenue you can bring from the tank and uh, when you should stop the production and so on. So knowing the mass is something that is extremely key. Now we have some challenges. So the first one is that it's a highly manual, time-consuming and inconsistent process 
to quantify fish and biomass production and growth in a traditional fish farm. So how can we use technology to do that? One possibility would be, well, let's try to see how how much water is in there and then you try to to like assume that uh, the water is constant and then you weight the total tank and you kind of like say okay so the difference is going to be how much more fish is in there you can't really do that because you have also unconsumed feed pallets so that means once you are uh once you are feeding your your fish they don't eat everything that you put in the tank so some of the fish pallets, they go to the bottom and, and they are not eaten. So they are not part of your fish. And also you have the excreta that comes out. So simply like assuming, like let's let's get the difference in weight from one day to another and assume that that's all part of the fish doesn't really work in this equation. Another idea that one could have would be, let's get the um, amount of water that we have there and let's just measure how much the water is going up and we assume that the difference in volume came because of um, because of the growth of the fish. And this also doesn't really work because the water in the tank is a variable quantity. It is a circulating system that adjusts the flow. Sometimes it pumps more water to clean it, right? If the tank starts getting dirty, you have to pump more water so that the dirty water goes away. So you don't have a consistent volume of water all the time. And plus, the tanks are also open. So especially in a region like Oman, you have a lot of evaporation during the day and your volume of water is, is not going to be constant, even if you wouldn't be flowing the water all the time. Then the next part is that it's a process whose control is largely experience driven. So normally you do, if you want to be very precise uh, in, in, all the, um, in all your estimations, you need people with a lot of experience and that is not so easy to get everywhere. And finally, there is also a high fish mortality within a population due to infection. So if you could basically give a final booster in your whole process of estimating biomass by also recognizing mortality and disease, uh, diseases that can lead to mortality, that would be an extra plus. So how did Siemens tackle this challenge? I'll give you the technical details in a, in a moment. For now, I'd like to show you a uh, a short video of the process so that you get a better understanding of what happened there. Environmental problems are challenging our planet. Globalization and our way of life accelerate climate change. An ever-growing population reduces available food. More intense agriculture is not the answer, and neither is overfishing the oceans. We need better ideas. Welcome to Urban Farming. With lower carbon footprint and less energy consumption, urban farming contributes to a sustainable future. In densely populated centers near water, offshore aquaculture is at its core. Fish are a key source of protein for a healthy diet. Their low feed conversion rate makes them an efficient option. The more fish we farm, the more we allow our oceans to regrow its depleted livestock. Wintershine, partnering Siemens, has combined cutting-edge industrial technology with modern aquaculture for tropical fish. Totally connected and digitalized, this is Aquaculture 4.0. Leveraging on an integrated and reliable automated system, Equipment and sensors are digitalized and connected to conventional workflows. Aquaculture 4.0 uses MindSphere, a cloud-based open IoT gateway from Siemens. It can now access a wealth of data and advanced analytics, allowing for precise management of all the processes on the farm. Video analytics and AI-driven machine learning measures the size of our fish activity levels and are able to detect diseases early. This is the difference between reactive and predictive farming. Aquaculture in urban farming is embedded into a circular economy. The reliable and efficient energy management system powered by Siemens allows around-the-clock operations, optimizing resource input. The smart farm thrives on regenerative processes such as 
solar energy for power, reusing water for the fish, natural biological filtration, and turning effluents into other useful produce. With technology ensuring oxygen levels and currents that mirror natural habitats, we are able to raise happier and stress-free fish. Properly harvested, we are able to bring fresher and higher quality produce to our consumers. The future of aquaculture has arrived. So here it's um, a little bit of um, an understanding of, uh, so you have seen the video, you have realized that uh, everything that we're doing there has to do with uh, vision. So the solution that Siemens has brought to this topic of like, how is the best way of measuring this and how can we really understand uh, how much fish is, is in the tank, um, excluding the evaporation, excluding the feed pallets that were not eaten, excluding the excreta that came out of the fish uh, was through computer vision. So basically we had uh, two cameras, so two lenses in the tank and they just like our eyes, right? So you need two so that you can build a 3D vision. You can get this idea of depth and you can get with sensors, you can detect where the fish are and from there you can measure and, and I'm going to walk you through the process of, of how we come to the mass from the measurements. So the first thing is you have the cameras in the tank and, and as you have seen in the previous slides, that's what the tanks look, looks like. It's a lot of fish come like basically amounted one on, on another. But then you, what we do is you get your, your camera image and you parse and you batch them. So it is just the same when you're watching a video, you can pause the video, right? And then you have a photo. So this is what we're doing with our system in a continuous way. We have the video going by, you parse the images, you batch them, and then you have something that looks like this image here. From this image here, you can very much easily take on and identify that there is a fish. So actually this image is the same image that you see here on the right. And you can see that uh, with the AI algorithm, you can automatically recognize and identify that this part of, uh, of the image here is one complete fish. Um, so also if you have, let's say, uh, an image that has uh, let's, a higher agglomeration of fish, like you see here above, you can see that the algorithm can detect exactly which, where is the, the, let's say, borders of each fish separately. And then from that part, uh, it goes on to a mathematical equation in which you get like, uh, you understand that that's the, the end of the fish. So it understands that like this part here doesn't have meat and it goes all the way here to the, to the very front of the fish. So you can run the math here by identifying where those two points are from the algorithm and you can calculate the length. So you have the length of the fish basically, which is this line here. From there you have, from benchmarking, from data that you get, you have um, a curve that basically estimates the weight of the fish based on the length of it. So let's assume you get a certain type of fish and, uh, and you know from, for this type of fish, if you have, let's say here, um, about 25 centimeters, it would be 200 grams. So this is what this curve is all about. Of course, you see there's lots of dots, it is scattered because it is made from a benchmark, but nevertheless, you can draw a, a line that more or less passes through all these points, like it is a regression at the end. And then from this regression, you can estimate the, the size of the mass of the fish based on its length. And this is pretty much what it does. The algorithm runs the whole day, so it keeps identifying where, where the fish are and, uh, and, and basically going on and, uh, and estimating what is the mass inside the tank. So this means what have we done technically? We have defined the requirements in, in line with the business goals. And then in this moment was mostly like understanding what is the, what is the biomass in the tank so that you can estimate better your revenue for the fish farm. Then you have a validated feasibility. Um, because the, one of the main 
the main triggers that you had there was you need to really understand how can you have the the visibility in the tank but without necessarily harming the fish and so it has to be a non-invasive technique it has to be something that doesn't block uh, the fish because one of the goals as well was to as you have seen in the video was to give them a better a better quality of life so to say so better oxygen levels and uh, and, and like of course like keep using the space of the tank to have a device in the middle of, in the middle there like stopping the fish from moving would not be a, a valuable uh, um, a viable solution and this was actually a, a lot of trial and error and i think a lot of the the digital solutions have to be co-created always because there is no one size fits all it's always a matter of understanding the context of the customer and then coming in trying some things adapting until you get to the final solution and then finally it goes to the software development side in which you have to develop the ai, AI algorithms uh, to understand how can you link the, the, the dimensions to the average biomass and how can you test that so you have to like also run in a smaller setting understand that your algorithm is really accurate until you can deploy it to a larger scale in this case we once we reach the an accuracy of over 95 percent that's when we, we were uh, happy to to use this in a, in a broader scale within the whole fish farm and then finally develop and deploy the um, the proof of concept as i mentioned you once you you get everything in place you go into really of calling it a, a solution that you can deploy in other places so looking at the impact that our solution brought to the customer in this case we did reduce feed costs that i mentioned before more than half of the cost of a feed uh, of a fish farm is from feeding the fish and they basically got uh they, they they found the right amount of um feed pellets that they have to supply to the tanks in order to optimize the fish growth and that means as well less unused feed pellets at the end of the day uh, improved labor productivity because you don't have so much manual work anymore and you also because of the technology because of this like constant um monitoring that you do you can obviously ensure that the fish are growing faster as well and finally you increase the output because if you have your fish growing faster um you you can have more fish out there and also from the from the cameras from the images you can also identify infections earlier and you can reduce the mortality rate uh, from the technology so what does what does this mean for us um so what we're looking here as i mentioned before from the from the hardware and, and software mix you're looking from digitized input from sensors then so this is the hardware part then you go into a control cycle action which is the software touch and then you get to your final result so one of them is for example oxygen as you mentioned as we mentioned on on the video uh, one of the points was let's make sure that we have enough oxygen to ensure like the best quality uh, of um, of water for the fish so that also they they are going to be healthier organisms and at the end of the day we are going to be eating healthier food so here it was a matter of uh, of looking into the sensors for oxygen and as soon as you would see the oxygen levels dropping below what is acceptable you could control increase or decrease oxygen demand from uh, from your software and that is again that gives an ideal metabolic condition for the food, for the fish and also if you have too much oxygen you can cut that and uh, and then you also save on oxygen if you if you're not needing it then you have the water conditions for self cleaning ability so you can have like sensors that detect if uh, if the water is dirty and then again as we mentioned you can get more water into the tank so that this cleans up but of course if the water is already clean you can decrease the amount of flow of water that is coming in and then um, normally this has been done by people in general like in your traditional fish farm someone walks around sees if the water is, is dirty or clean and then maybe um, like increases the flow or close the tap opens the tap and then here this is all controlled by by variable frequency drives and so on and you also have less bacteria and parasites which go back to ensuring a uh, higher uh let's say level of health of the fish and therefore also of our food 
Um, this is the topic that we just approached, the average body weight of fish and of the tank, and that's the feeder programming that we talked about with the um, with, with, um, imaging technology. And here again, you can think about what is the appropriate amount of food that you're going to put in your tank, getting the optimization from there, uh, and also how often you're going to give food to the fish. Finally, the uh, activity level of fish. This is also one thing to be considered here. Uh, the idea is that you can you have sensors that can determine how active your, your fish are, and this can help you stop feeding them if, if it is not needed, if they have already enough food and they are, they're calmed down. And also you can have a, an early disease detection because one of the things that happen to fish is they become much, uh, much, more, uh, much slower or, or much quieter when they, they are suffering from some disease. So this also avoids the, the waste of feed once again and also helps you to detect diseases early so that they don't, sp don't spread to other fish in the tank. And finally, the, the livestock and growth rates of fish tanks. Um, so this is something that we, we manage by, by data and, and we have the actual controls of how the fish are growing. And that also finally helps us predict the, how much livestock is there. Uh, giving you the idea of a um, portfolio of Siemens that is used in this. So first of all, we have um, automation and SCADA. So basically the, the systems that um, identify and that can help you with data management. Then image analytics is also something that Siemens produces. We also have energy management. So that is basically when you're talking about how can, if I have like uh, my, my water flow and, and any type of, um, of device that consumes energy, we can also optimize the energy consumption of the device itself. MindSphere is our IoT layer where you have like all this the software, all these applications running and they need to run on, a, on an IoT layer and uh, Siemens also has its proprietary IoT layer called MindSphere. We're also in development of a proof of concept for blockchain so that you can ensure the safety and um, the security of the data and uh, you can give transparency to people without being afraid that the data has been compromised. And finally, we also make sure that the, the thing keeps running and uh, we service all of the solutions that we have provided to this. That is my summary. I think I'm actually already running out of time, so uh, I'm not going to be repeating myself over again and uh, looking forward to the next presentation and then to, to questions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Claudia. That was a very great presentation, uh, looking at all the benefits uh, that can come out of using AI in fish farming. Uh, that was very interesting uh, for me personally as well to see all of that. It's very new, and I'm sure lots of the participants enjoyed that too. Um, so we'll move on to our next speaker. Uh, and to all the delegates, uh, feel free to send your questions through. We will uh, take them all at the end. Uh, so feel free to send your questions through to the Q&A or to the chat section. Uh, so then we'd like to call on Mohammed Arsalan, uh, who will be talking about enhancing the productivity of agriculture by AI. Over to you, Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks for having me all. Am I audible? Uh, yes, we can, we can hear you. We can see you. Let me share my screen. Sure. You can see my screen now. Uh, yeah, it's just about to. Um, it's saying sharing, but uh, we okay now. Now we can see. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for having me over. So it's my pleasure to be part in this. Uh, Sorry, um, Mohammed, can I ask you to um, maybe uh, come a little bit closer or speak a little bit louder, because it's not that clear. Okay. Uh, how about now, sir? Hello. Uh, it's a little bit better. Yeah. So thanks for thanks for me for having me over. So it is my privilege to be in the part of a comics event to present my work, my understanding and knowledge about machine learning and multiple 
and its applications in multiple industries. So I will go with the uh, in the line of our uh, conference, which is uh, application of artificial intelligence in uh, agriculture and uh, fisheries. Yeah, so as we are moving towards our uh, technological driven industries, uh, artificial intelligence is playing a major role in uh, revolutionizing uh, multiple industries. Uh, it is also impacting uh, agriculture and uh, fisheries. So why do we want to apply artificial intelligence in agriculture or um, you can say fisheries? So first of all, it is a climatic change. And uh, as we know that uh, the uh, due to heavy industrialization, there is a heavy climate change and uh, it is also impacting the cycle of uh, our production and it is also affecting our crops and, uh, and water resource management and uh, water table. So we, so we should uh, implement artificial intelligence to tackle those problems. So, and also like automation, automating the process of, of um, workflow of uh, agriculture. So, yeah, so we can use artificial intelligence in the research and development, and we can use it to classify images, videos, and we can detect the uh, diseases of the plants or fishes or crabs or any animals and we can also use uh, deep learning techniques to visualize, uh, visualize the data and we can forecast uh, some parameters in agriculture and fisheries like uh, we can forecast sales, we can forecast uh, profit, we can forecast, uh, can uh, predict the outbreak of some diseases in some, some, of, some of the key areas like uh, in crop, some crop and we can also like uh, predict the outbreak of uh, diseases in fishes or any marine animals. So, yeah, so we use uh, artificial intelligence in multiple, we use uh, artificial intelligence in multiple scenarios. So, as, in, as going with the line with the agenda of the meeting, uh, I have a, I have a few demos for, which can be implemented, which can be developed in uh, to revolutionize uh, agriculture inter industries and uh, fisheries. Uh, first of them, first of is web application. We can create web application using some deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, where we can uh, have uh, some interactive features like we can input the image of uh, fish or we can input the image of any crop, thereby we can get classification uh, we can get customized classification like uh, it will categorize into multiple multiple category. Then we can have if, if the plant has if the plant or any fish or any marine marine has any diseases, we can get a recommendation for treatment. So this is with our web application. We can we can make our web application using Node.js and uh, deep learning and we can host it on cloud infrastructure, which will be very beneficial for uh, agricultural industries. Then again, we'll have a chatbot. Chatbots are on our relation as in all of all the industries. In agriculture, to be particular, we can use uh, chatbots to, for better communication, for automating the uh, chat, or we can automate the customer support where, where a user or a farmer or a or an employee can uh, directly uh, contact uh, contact and talk with the pre-trained models, uh, which are then again backed by deep learning and artificial algorithms. Thereby, he can get his uh, automated response uh, with the pre-trained data. Then we have uh, AI-powered uh, drones, so we can develop um, drones where we, where we can uh, inculcate uh, uh, Arduino's and uh, mining tiny ml tiny machine learning where we can uh, we can we can customize our drones according to our needs like uh, these drones can be also helpful in in like surveying of the uh, farming area or surveying of uh, uh, you can say 
uh, fish, uh, you can use it for survey of sea. And yeah, pretty much for this. And we can also predict, uh, we can also predict uh, if, uh, if there's any water shortage in some particular area so that our yay power drone will redirect its data to end users or customers or backend. So then again, we have one more thing, which is a revolution using robotic farming. And yeah, we can automate the process where uh, according to our needs, we can have a uh, robots, which will be again, pretend on our historical data or customizable uh, artificial intelligence framework, which will be helpful in um, like, uh, going to tough terrains and performing some difficult tasks. And it will help us in increasing the output of uh, agricultural needs or in fisheries also. And we can use uh, some machine learning algorithm and deep learning algorithm with um, cloud vision or you can say image detection algorithm for building robotic robotics, which, which again will be used in farming. Um, so coming to the market of uh, artificial intelligence in agriculture, uh, according to McKinsey report, it is contributing $500 uh, billion and uh, it is estimated in the coming days, it will contribute it will contribute $2 trillion to $3 trillion to global GDP, which is again, a very good thing. Yeah, that's it for me. If you have any doubts, thank you. Guys. Thank you very much, Mohammed, uh, for yeah. that presentation, yeah. uh, for showing us some of the products that are available uh, in AI when it comes to agriculture and fisheries. Yeah, yeah. Um, so thank you both uh, for those presentations, mm -hmm. uh, both very useful. Um, this session is, has, has been recorded, so of course it will be shared uh, for uh, more people to see through uh, via all our networks and social media platforms. So uh, the next uh, part of the session is to go to the Q&A. Uh, so I can see a few questions. Uh, on the uh, Q&A, which uh, I will read out in order. Uh, and if any delegates want to ask a question uh, on the camera, you can just raise your hand and we can give you the platform to ask a question as well. So the first question is from Ali Abdul Hussein. Good morning, excited to the session. I might be asking too early, are there any applications for offshore aquaculture farms where AI solutions are applied? Are the applications for offshore aquaculture farms where AI, AI solutions are applied? Uh, so I guess this is, uh, I mean, for, from my end, I have to say, um, I understand that this is like when you have all, only the nets, right? Um, outside of, uh, in the ocean. I mean, of course you can find a way of like installing a camera there. And uh, I, I don't know like how much you would consider this artificial intelligence. Um, because at the end, I think also the, the boundaries of artificial intelligence sometimes have to be uh, better better defined. But if it is about, let's say, getting sensors and getting cameras that you install on the nets and then you start seeing like when there's more fish, so you don't have to send someone out there to check and then come back. Those, this, of course, you can definitely do. The point is, um, if, you, if you can develop uh, an algorithm, let's say, to measure the weight and so on, it may be a little bit trickier because then you have like a much bigger environment and maybe uh, in a tank, of course, all the fish are going to pass by at some point. So it's easier to, to estimate than if you have a very large area to cover. But um, at, at the same time, it is a matter of like just replicating the same process. So what we have done in the uh, fish farm in the tanks is that what you do normally is that you send a human person with their two eyes and they look through the tank and then they try to estimate. So how can you replicate the eyes? You do two lenses. And then how can you replicate the, the knowledge of the person? Well, normally they look at the size as well. So this is, this is what we have done with an algorithm. So if you understand this, the process in which you're doing the offshore farm, you can probably find as well devices that you can install and the software that you can build around it. But for sure, you cannot, it's not going to be the exact same solution that you use in a fish farm tank. So may I speak? 
Yes, of course, Mohammed. Yeah, thanks for your question. So, as uh, you were suggesting, you're asking for offshore aquaculture farm, so it will not have a limited boundaries. It may depend. It may depend on the area. So, what I suggest is we can have a build a artificial intelligence drones with some centers, with some sensors and some Arduino boards. So it will like uh, it will go and survey the area of a, like a aquaculture or aquaculture field, and it will uh, give the feedback uh, through wireless. And it, we can also break in the artificial intelligence tools with some like custom custom defined uh, like custom defined softwares like uh, detecting the type of uh, fishes, crabs, shrimps, etc. So it will be very handy if you use uh, artificial intelligence in, brain in your case. Thank you both for that answer. Um, I'll go. I'll move on to uh, Ali Abdul Hussein's uh, next question, uh, which is, uh, what is the minimal scale of a fish farm to justify the AI investment? This is referring to retail fish farmers who have fish tanks in their personal farms. Would like to answer that first. Hello, Demo. I can go, sure. Um, so the, the point here is again, it is always a matter of understanding where you have to pay so much for labor or you have to have so much of a, um, let's say scarce ability that you say, let me replace this with technology. If you're talking about, I have um, one tank with, um, I don't know, maybe 15 kilos of fish or even less, like let's say eight kilos of fish in my backyard, then of course, you should take care of it yourself, probably. But um, at the example that I gave from our project in Singapore, we were talking about 10 tanks with 10 kilo of fish each. So, sorry, with uh, tank, 10 tanks with 10,000 fish each. So that is, a, a, let's say, a scale in which you needed a couple, of, like a few people to be employed to be taking care of that. And plus they were planning for two extra tanks with 10,000 fish in each one of them, right? So it is 120,000 fish. There is something where you say like, let me put some technology in because you get, um, I'm not saying that's the minimum. I don't know what the minimum is to be honest. And I would need to get my, my technical experts. And I think as well, the minimum depends a lot on how much you're paying for that labor because the investment in AI, it's gonna be more or less constant, but uh, you're, if you're talking about I'm paying someone in the Nordics versus I'm paying someone in Philippines, it's also a little bit different and uh, it may or may not compensate depending on that. Thank you, Claudia. Mohammed, is there anything you'd like to add on this question? Yeah, yeah. I agree with uh, Claudia, ma'am, regarding. So investing in artificial intelligence to like uh, to scale up the process is a long-term goal. So initially we'll, we'll invest in some capital but uh, the return on investment will be in the, over the long term. It will not be imminent. But yeah, it will. But it will yield a better a return on investment. And I think here, just one like more philosophical thought. I mean, Oman is. Um, I, I feel like the reality nowadays. Yes, there's a lot of small fish farmers. There's a lot of like fishermen that that go in the ocean and take it. But when you're talking about growing the participation of fisheries in the economy, then you have to think bigger scale. Because again, like uh, fish is not oil. Uh, the, the, the value of a fish is, is way lower than, than the, the equivalent weight of the oil, right? So um, you have to think about how can I really go on and, and like have harvest fish, not only for the local population, but also for the region, for export and so on. And um, and, and that is like actually a little bit the mentality. So this is why you have to think about relying on technology because you have to be planning to, to really go big, go in a scale, go in like a 10,000 fish farm. Yes. I do agree with Claudia. Thank you for that. Um, the other question, uh, I think uh, Claudia, you asked it, you answered the question from Rometha. Um, I yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, Okay, and then uh, so just to repeat, like they, they were, he was asking if the 
if there was any uh, real application and I mentioned like the project that I showcased, it is applied in Singapore. It is an actual project. Great, great. And uh, uh, Ali Abdul Hussein, uh, he asked um, applications to others such as sh shrimp farms as well. I guess that uh, of course applies as well. I don't know, uh, uh, Ali Abdul Hussein has some very good questions. I don't know if we can make him, uh, if you can give him the, the, the camera, Sadiq or... Yes, Ammar, I have, uh, yeah, there, there comes Ali. Assalamu alaikum. Hi, Ali. Ali. Assalamu alaikum. Ali. Thank you for um, Sadaf and uh, Ammar for the invitation. Claudia and Mohamed, it, it, uh, thank you for the session today. I a few questions and I guess I was invited to, to, to come and join. Yeah, the, the, the questions I had is regarding, so I get AI has the, Flexibility, maybe to reduce labor costs in Northern Europe and other places around the world. But this part of the world, labor costs is quite low, relatively. And that may, might be a bit difficult to sell. So I'm just wondering, and you mentioned probably you know, identifying diseases and whatnot. So the question is, has there been any um, regional application of AI really showing its ROI? Um, I mean, I'm coming from a you know, specific like, invest, you know, financial point of view. Um, has there been, and what, what, which ones, maybe not Singapore as it is a very urban city and very, um, has its quite high expenses. I'm just thinking about here in the region. Yeah, yeah. so from, from, my, from our side, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't know how to answer like regarding competitors because to be very honest, fisheries is definitely not on the, on the core of what Siemens does. Um, so from, from Siemens, we, we have not deployed anything in the region. I have also never been approached, let's say, like actually this, I went after this example uh, last week when uh, when Amr gave the invitation to speak on the topic, and that's when we started like looking about uh, examples in in the region. I don't uh, sorry in the world uh, because I think it is actually a very fresh topic, um, like talking about AI, AI, right? I mean, maybe you have like let's say sensors being applied, and then when when there is a sensor, maybe you have an alarm, and then you have to send a person there. So. But the idea is really to do this in a in a predictive way rather than in a reactive way. So I can imagine that there are sensors deployed in many farms in the region, but where you use technology to really like predict something, I don't think so. Uh, the other point regarding labor, I think it is, um, um, I don't think Oman is such a cheap country, to be honest. I mean, if you would compare with, um, I don't know, with uh, Pakistan, uh, India, it's another, it's another level of cheap right? Uh, because it's not only about thinking about, well, I, I guess, especially now we are in, in crossroads, right? We're trying to get uh, more Omanis in the workforce. And I think it is not a, it's not hidden to any one of us that Omanis would not work for the same amount of money that the current people that we have working maybe in, in construction or in fish farms uh, are accepting to work. So I think the point is also they're looking into the future. It's a matter of uh, there is going to be a balance. I think um, there are lo lots of things will happen down the road, but maybe the costs are going to be a little bit higher. And even if not, you can imagine that like, yeah, you have low costs here, but for the low cost that you have, you also don't have the expertise that maybe you need to have. And that is exactly where you're talking about efficiencies. So yeah, of course you can bring people, you can bring like labor for, for cheap amount and, and they are there like taking care of the farm, but they may also not be taking care of the fish as well as it should be taken care so that you can demand the price for the fish as high as you would be able to demand if you would have a fish with like the great eye, like it's normally, right? So when you go buy the fish, you take a look at the eye, how it, how it is and so on. Um, if you can take better care of your fish, then you can also demand a higher price for it later on. And, and that is exactly like a, the example I gave actually reduced the cost in 8% a year. It is, so it's not going to move the needle of like, oh, it's going to reduce, reduce drastically, but it is a matter of like reducing 8% and maybe the fish are a little bit healthier. So you can demand like, let's say 10% more. And if you get the effects on both ends, then you have at least already like a, a almost 20% difference in the result of your business. And if you're talking again about the dimension um, of, of like um, 10,000 fish in a fish farm, you have you start getting to the scale where even if you tweak a little bit a couple of percentage points, you have in the dollar amount or the money real amount a very big impact. I, I, Sorry, I, I spoke too much. 
No, no, uh, on the contrary. And uh, apologies if I'm uh, speaking more. I don't know. I haven't introduced myself, so apologies to to the panelists no and uh, to to the um, delegates who are attending. So my name is Ali Bersen. Um Currently, work for a venture capital firm called Innovation Development Oman uh, as one of the subsidiaries of Oman Investment Holding. And at the moment, I'm seconded to uh, Fisheries Development Oman. Uh, one led to difference, but completely different two different worlds. Uh, so Fisheries Development Oman is the subsidiary of Oman Investment Authority. Again focusing on making investments in uh, fish-related uh, projects here in the country. Um, we currently have three subsidiaries. We have Amosta, Oceanic, and uh, Blue Waters. Blue Waters does the offshore farming, so hence that question there. Um, Oceanic does shrimp farms, so hence that question over there. Um, and the other one does coastal ship fishing, that which has, uh, at the moment, I can't think of any questions here, but that's, that's kind of my role, and hence why. And in regards to venture capital innovation, I'm all about technology and all that good stuff. I've met um, Amr and uh, Sadev, fortunately, in the, in the offices, and we've had prior discussions as well. So that's an introduction to, to myself. So apologies, I haven't done that before. Um, no problem. You, you, may, you may definitely make a valid point about, you know, a small percentage changes can make, have a big financial impact, especially in larger projects. Uh, there was a question regarding shrimp farm. Um, I, don't, I don't think I, he I heard the question. I think they're switching me over to this panelist version. I don't know if I heard the question regarding... No, I don't think... We didn't ask. We didn't answer the question. Uh, so from from my end, and probably Mohammed also wants to to answer. Uh, from my end, we don't have a like a real example like that. I can tell you, we've done a project in this place. Otherwise, I would probably have put that example here because I know that uh, Oman is, is very much a big passion on, sh on shrimp farms. But again, since this example was a co-creation, so of course we can look at a shrimp farm and say, okay, let's co-create a solution here. You can uh, again. You start from the same process, like how do you normally do it? If it is about, okay, someone goes and looks and does this and that, then you can say, okay, I replace the person who goes and looks by two cameras, and then you start looking. What do they look? How do they estimate? And then you try to get an algorithm that, that re replicates that. Um, so you, you can probably create a solution that does it based on the same, um, let's say, on the same uh, hypothesis and assumptions that is made for, for the, um, the physical care. Uh, Mohammed? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, completely doable. Uh, like uh, instead of wishes, uh, you can uh, you can have uh, the artificial intelligence applied with uh, pre-trained on uh, shrimps. Instead of wishes, uh, the artificial intelligence or the machine learning uh, algorithm will detect the size of the shrimps, or you can say size of the shrimps, or it will calculate the uh, three-dimensional uh, space, and it will give you the input about. Uh, the parameters which you which which will be useful in your uh, shrimp cultivation, and it will give you a, a notification on your mobile or you can mobile or email. You can customize as per your need. Okay, thank you for that, Muhammad. Um, just quickly, there was another question here on the Q and A from uh, Rajesh Honor. The AI solution, which is suggested, is feasible. Uh, is it a feasible solution for small and marginal farmers? I think this re this relates again to what Claudia was mentioning about some of the benefits. I don't know if you want to um, go into more detail about this question. There's something I want to add to that uh, question, Amar. Um, as a as a Ribbon Research Bureau, we get asked a lot of uh, times to do research. Uh, by uh, those who are already into um, farming, horticulture. Uh, mm. People in Oman uh, now are getting into the uh, self-growing with their farms. Uh, this started off a lot uh, when the pandemic set in, that they could uh, cultivate uh, horticulture and then aquaponics, which is like using the same infrastructure for uh, producing uh, fruits and vegetables as well as like fish. So a lot of questions come. Yes, uh, AI probably is for large or medium size uh, farming. Uh, however, can we also benefit in our uh, initial days uh, in Oman? Unlike in India, India it's quite advanced where uh, there's a large population and many people have gotten to uh, tank-based farming or uh, offshore farming closer to the shores. 
but in Oman is just a very beginning. So th this this question is like, is, is AI a solution? Uh, yes, Claudia mentioned about like uh, cost of labor versus uh, uh, the cost of AI, but is AI a solution for them to get into at this early stage? Because we can see this like mushroom quite a lot where individual farmers start to get in using AI into cultivation of fish. Is there, is there like uh, any, um, Claudia and Mohammed, any kind of rough estimates of, of the cost of this type of technology? I know it depends on the uh, requirements and the size of the farms, uh, but like how, uh, in terms of numbers, generally, are you able to kind of shed some light on that? On the financial investment required and the maintenance costs? Um, so, I, I mean, so first of all, if you're talking about, let's say, I had that slide in which I talked about like the five different things, right? You had like the oxygen levels, you had the, the cleanliness of the water and, and so on. Uh, the, the main point here is if you look at just like sensors for detecting oxygen levels or sensors for detecting the cleanliness of the water, because you, you can like start looking at like chemical components that are in the water and so on. So sensors in general are not expensive. The, the, let's say you have kind of like a step function when you go into the computer vision solution, because then it is about cameras that can be submerged in the water. And then you have like the algorithm that has to be built and then you have all of this. So of course, if you're, and that, but then that's also goes into the, what is the frontier of AI? Uh, at least the way Siemens looks at it, if you just have a couple of sensors installed that tell you, okay, the oxygen level is, is high, uh, send someone there to to maybe oh, like um, insert more oxygen oxygen on the flow. I don't see this as AI. I see this as like an automation that that like where Siemens has been doing for for over fifty years already, or even hundred years, depending on where you look. Um, so there, I feel like it is technology for sure, but it is not what we call AI. AI is when we see preventive, uh, predictive um, technology coming in. And for the smaller scale, then of course you can install a couple of sensors and you're gonna, it's probably gonna cost you like a thousand of money the other, something like this, depending on, on how many sensors you wanna put in, and, and so on. And once you go into something like, no, I wanna be predicting, then it is a totally different ball game. And um, I am I'm just like actually full transparency, I'm checking if I can disclose the amount of the project uh, that we have done because I don't know if it is confidential or not. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Um, Mohammed, do you want to speak a little bit about um, the costs and the kind of financial investment? Yeah. Yes, yes, go ahead. So I, I got the answer and it was about 500,000 Singaporean dollars. So we just have to do the conversion. But that's, um, that's how much we, uh, that, that project cost for uh, a fish farm that has 10,000 fish in it. Okay, so that's roughly 145,000 Armani. Sorry, uh, 100,000 fish in it. So it was 10 tanks of 10,000 fish in each, each tank. So 100,000 fish in it. Okay. Thank you for that, Claudia. No problem. May I speak? Yes, go ahead, Mohammed. Yeah, so... Like I agree, I completely agree, agree with uh, Claudia in regards to cost, uh, uh, cost breakdown, like the sensors will not be that much expensive. The, again, the, the heavy cost will be on like development side and testing side. And for, for some customizable solutions, first we need to have uh, sensors, then we need to train those sensors with uh, artificial intelligence, uh, you can say computer vision, image classification, then forecasting also, because if the client is uh, predictive, we need to go for a, uh, more testing and for multiple scenarios. So sometimes a water tank will not have a light. In nighttime, it will not have light. That time we need to train for some more models, some more time, time of video or images. So yeah, then again, it's a very complex uh, calculations. It depends on, then again, the 
the area and uh, area and size of the project so i'm not, i'm not, i'm not able to tell you about uh, the pricing part but uh, i agree uh, with the cloud am and that uh, for for basic it will be like 1000 in one area and as we progress with some more applications it it, it will scale up it will scale up and we can uh, if, if if the client needs uh, to be de uh, deployed in local server or if he wants to be deployed in cloud server then again it will come with some extra cost we can go for google cloud aws azure Uh, excuse me, apologies. I'm gonna have to excuse myself. Uh, I have another meeting. Was an interrupt. Didn't plan course, to thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure to meet you both. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank there. you. Thank, great you. Thank, thank, you thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Um, I I just wanted to ask if 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 you can speak a little bit about the experience in Oman so far. Has there been uh, a good response? Um, uh, kind of, uh, do people understand uh, the importance of, of AI uh, in this area? Is it, is it being used, um, or maybe in the GCC? If you have any experience from the GCC region as well, I was wondering if you can speak about uh, kind of more more locally what's what's happening. If if you, if you can disclose that information. Uh, yes. That was to, to me or to Mohammed? Uh, to, to both, sorry, to both of you, to all, all of our speakers. Okay. So you're, but you're talking about fisheries in general or any application? Uh, I, no, I, th I think, more, more, yeah, uh, fisheries and, and, and agriculture in, in, in specific. Yeah, so for, uh, so for fisheries, as I mentioned, I mean, um, no, like the, the only example that, that we have found uh, from, from Siemens deploying the world was, uh, was this one in Singapore. And um, and since that's that's not let's say the the core of what Siemens does, it's uh, mm. I don't have like a visibility on the competitors or, or other projects. Mm. From ag agriculture, we do have in the GCC. Very recently, we have deployed some vertical farms, um, like of of growing vegetables and and so on. And uh, and this is something where. We are using algorithms to, to track how, how these vertical um, like plantations, let's say, are growing and so on. So this is one of our flagship projects in terms of utilizing digital technologies. So it, again, it's not AI so much because it's not a, pre a predictive topic, but it is a matter of like using digital solutions to keep monitoring, at least the monitoring we're doing and um, with, uh, with sensors and so on. And, and seeing how the, the vertical farms are growing. Thank you, Claudia. Mohammed, from your experience, have you have you managed to uh, yeah. uh, work with any partners over here? Yeah, like uh, in, in Oman, not, not only in Oman, in general, you can say GCC countries and uh, world over. My voice is clear? Yes, it's clear. Not only in Oman, uh, in the world over, we can see the implementation of uh, AI and uh, machine learning is like revolutionizing many industries. It's not only limited to agriculture or fisheries. It is going for healthcare, financials, and uh, uh, you can say banking sectors, hospitality. It, 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 is, uh, like, it is penetrating into multiple sectors. And, and it is also giving a boost for the economies. So, yeah, in Oman also many many companies are implementing artificial intelligence to scale up uh, in line with the vision to 2040 of uh, His Majesty. Thank you for that, Mohammed. Yeah. Um, okay, I don't see any more uh, further questions coming in. Uh, of course, uh, if the delegates do have any questions after the session they can feel free to uh, contact the comex team uh, if, or I, if i could just ask claudia one uh, one thing sure. Uh, sure claudia you mentioned that uh, siemens uh, uh, focuses on uh, vertical farms and uh, horticulture farms um, lately we've seen a lot of organizations some of the group companies approached us asking for uh, feasibility study getting into vertical farms and into horticulture. 
uh, these organizations, these groups were never into um, agriculture. Uh, they just uh, saw the, the spike in food demand and food security and uh, the kind of uh, challenges in importing food and the fear of not being able to supply. And they saw this as a big opportunity. And also the price increase in the uh, fresh produce uh, they started to approach us. Now, in Oman, what, what I understand is uh, the rush would be more for horticulture growing uh, in vertical farms. And uh, it would take uh, a bit more time to get into fisheries. So if you tell us more about what Siemens is doing or what they have as an uh, offer for Oman uh, for the horticulture side, that, that would help our audience. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I don't have a presentation with me right now here, uh, but I'm also, I mean, if you have any specific names that are looking for this that you can send my way, I'm more than happy to organize that. Uh, the main point uh, in, uh, in vertical farms that we have been doing was a, a pilot project with, uh, with Saudi. And um, the idea there was exactly this, was how can we make sure that we're doing vertical farms in... Um, in a sustainable way, so because there is a lot of, uh, I think, especially here in the region with the whole story of oil and gas, I think everyone's trying to to prove uh, the sustainability values over and over again. And uh, and then the the point was, how can we make it sustainable? How can we make it cost effective? And how can we really ensure, for example, irrigation? So this is one of the things that uh, that our we have applications in our Mind Sphere platform for irrigation. And there, what we have is again, you have sensors that you put in like strategic points of your of a vertical farm, and then you can understand when it is really needed to have irrigation. And that, of course, goes into a lot of factors are taking consideration. So the humidity of the air, the the incidence of solar rays, so how much the, the soil is getting dry from evaporation, uh, and then these sensors they can measure real time what's happening. And then they can trigger automatically the sprinklers to be having more water or less water and, and also making sure that you also don't over irrigate because this would be not only a waste of water, but it would also be uh, many times bad for the plants, right? If you like start flooding everywhere. So it is a matter of like understanding how you, you deploy the this irrigation sensors and, and how much water you should give. Um, an ultimate application of, of this irrigation software that we have is, um, is not for farming, but I think is nevertheless very curious and very interesting. It is in the Bayern München Stadium in Munich. So you have the soccer stadium and uh, the requirement of, the, of Bayern, of the soccer team that, that owns the stadium, was that they wanted to make sure that everyone would see the same intensity of green on the grass. And one of the, the determinations of the intensity of the green of the grass is the irrigation, how much, how irrigate, well irrigated it is. Mm -hmm. And this is what, uh, what Siemens did. So you have the same software that controls irrigation, but, uh, and, and the sensors as well. And plus you have a, a combination to ensure that, uh, that the, the green remains the same all year long from all of the angles that you look at and so on. Um, but this is uh, also an application of the of this irrigation app that we have. That's a very smart uh, application, uh, what you have mentioned. Uh, um, one more question I have. Uh, now, Oman uh, Vision 2040 is looking into agriculture, fisheries development, as well as uh, Oman has been working very hard on food security and sustainability. Now, we spoke about fish, we spoke about um, farm uh, uh, horticulture. Um, there's a lot of investment happening into meat and dairy in Oman. So are these, sec are these subsectors looking into AI? Uh, do you have any uh, information on that, uh, Claudia or Mohammed? Whoever... I'll let, I'll let Mohammed go first this time, at least. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm <laughs> Yeah, no problem. No problem. Uh, so, yeah. So you uh, you're telling me about uh, uh, like a 
come again? It's meat. Uh, meat. Um, meat. Oman is uh, having big investments into meat production. Meat production, yeah. And also dairy production, which it never looked into before. Um, so have they approached uh, or are they considering AI as one of the uh, critical things into such sizes for investment was my question. Yeah. So yeah. So food security is a challenge uh, which is uh, most most of the countries are going to tackle. And uh, also Oman is also like uh, on its path to Vision 2040 by concentrating its economy on uh, agriculture and uh, fisheries and uh, and tourism also. And coming to your your point. Uh, Meat and uh, other 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 things. There are some applications for artificial intelligence in growing uh, meat lab. Have you heard of uh, vegetable meat? They have developed in Singapore. So yeah, even in in Oman as well, we start to see some produce come in uh, with uh, vegetable meat. Yeah, that will be helpful in uh, research and development part, and uh, also uh, developing in uh, scaling scaling like. Uh, multiple thousand, thousands of tons of meat. And also there, there is uh, research and development on going on to produce milk from soya bean. Have you heard? I hope you have heard about it. Developing uh, veg vegetarian milk from soya, soya, soya bean. So yeah, artificial intelligence uh, is a major impact in like uh, research and development of uh, like making uh, vegetable meat and vegetable uh, milk and yeah. All the cover, like you said, uh, Oman is also adopting, and even in India also they are adopting. And we can also use artificial intelligence and prediction in, uh, you can say store store. Uh, you can say warehouse management, like uh, prediction of uh, sales, forecasting the sales, like how is the sales of uh, mutton is going to happen. As you can see in the usual trend, uh, around the eight time the. Around the eight time, the sale of meat will be high. That is a like a general assumption, hypothesis. But when we go for historical data with a structured format, then we can predict exactly how much amount of cows to be slaughtered in Oman in Eid. Like you can say, Eid al Adha, we don't need uh, that much is to be slaughtered because everyone will slaughter in their own home. But when it comes to uh, Ramzan, then we need to have uh, some more uh, uh, more uh, slaughter. Uh, to be happy because uh, in the Ramadan, no one will be slaughter in there. So yeah, we can use uh, in prediction of uh, like a slaughter demand and a prediction of uh, you can uh, predict multiple uh, you can say factors of uh, mutton industry, mutton or uh, uh, you can say sericulture or not sericulture, it's uh, aquaculture. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, from, from my side, I think just uh, complementing, not talking about what AI can do, but like what I see from the market here, no. um, I don't see, I don't see much. As I said, even before, like there is a reason why uh, I started looking for the topic last week when uh, I got the invitation, the kind invitation from Amr, because um, it, this is something that, I mean, I, I'm aware that we have, let's say, shrimp farms and then like, let's say, a hope for more fish farms and so on. But the, the maximum technological angle that I look at it from market demand is about controls. It's about variable frequency drives or, or maybe some, some controls here and there for automation. But, um, but this market demand for AI applications, I don't see that, that yet uh, being a reality in one. Do you expect that to become high. available, Claudia? As I, I see, it's at the very beginning of uh, application of AI in agriculture, uh, fish uh, production, or animal husbandry, dairy. But do you see that kind of uh, catch up soon? Uh, maybe the awareness, maybe the uh, understanding sets in. How, how do you see it? Like, how do you predict it? For me, it's a matter of of scale. Like AI is only makes sense when you're talking about scale. It's uh, from social media all the way to fisheries, right? I mean, if, if Facebook wouldn't have the scale that it has, if Google wouldn't have the scale that they have or Amazon, they wouldn't have so many artificial intelligence algorithms trying to predict your behavior and, and to put, uh, let's say, customized advertisement in front of you. The only reason why they do that 
it's because they have a big scale and they can capitalize on that. And it's the same thing throughout all the AI applications. You need scale. So for you to scale in a country of 4 million people and maybe even a little bit less now, you need commitment. So you don't have the market here that is going to self-generate itself. We're not talking about India or China. We are in Oman. So you need commitment because you need to have a group of people determined to say, I will do this. I will do this seriously enough to make sure I can export it. Unfortunately, we don't have the market here present in the country to generate enough scale to justify a lot of AI technology. But if you are committed enough and you are serious to say, I will fight for other markets because that is a very different ball game again. If you have your own market, then you can count on regulations. You can count on a lot of, uh, let's say, um, influencing from, from within uh, to secure the market for you. But if you're talking about, no, let's achieve scale to export, then it's, it's a more aggressive game and you need a much more commitment for that. Right, absolutely. Uh, mushrooms, is that because Oman is exporting a lot of mushroom? Has uh, that side looked into AI? Is there any information available? No, I, not that I'm aware, but, uh, but again, as I said, it's, uh, it, it's not necessarily my day-to-day -day reality. So maybe there, is, there are projects that I'm not aware. Okay. I think that's it for and my I, side. And again, if, if anyone in the audience would like to discuss with us, we are, we're more than happy to do so because at the end, um, the, the technology that we do, it's, we do co-creation cases. So we have simply like a lot of integration expertise and like expertise also in, in building applications and optimizing setups. And this can be pretty much customized to any setting um, as long as, and we also have projects in other parts of the world where we have experts that we can pull in and we can build things together. Thank you. Oh, I'll speak for one minute. Yeah. So coming from mushroom cultivation or any other cultivation, like uh, like you, you're speaking about hydroponics, so you'll have, you can, uh, can build uh, customizable solutions for customizable uh, problems using AI. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, uh, Sadiq, there's there's a question. One more question is there on the Q and A about? Can you see it? Yes, uh, yes, I can read that. Uh, we are into pest management solution, specifically into fruit fly. We do have small level of AI solutions, but more into R and D as of now. What are the opportunities in Oman? Hello, dear ma'am. I guess I'm not necessarily the, the most expert person in the call to, to answer this, um, but I would imagine, like, probably this is this is a, a type of um, of question that 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 it could actually maybe bring to to one of the ministries, I guess. Um, yes, maybe I, the Minister of Technology could help them navigate the environment, right, Amr? Yeah, we had some discussions with the Muscat Municipality and uh, Ministry uh, of Regional Municipalities, uh, probably asking them would help because we did do some event on pest and pest management. Uh, we have some connections. So Rajesh, if you reach out to us, we will uh, try to put you into the right uh, contacts. Okay, thank you, Rajesh, and uh, thank you to all of our uh, panel here and all of our delegates uh, for this uh, great session. Yeah. Uh, we look forward to having you um, at a future Comex series. Uh, great to meet all of you and we will stay in touch. And I encourage delegates to uh, get in touch uh, with our speakers uh, for more advice uh, where required. So thank you, everyone. How should they? How will they thank contact? You. Sorry, Mohammed, you were asking something. How, how they will contact? Uh, how 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 will they contact? That's a very yeah. good question. Uh, uh, Sadiq, uh, do do we share the uh, information of our speakers with uh, with the delegates? Uh, yes, Summer, it's on the Comics website. Uh, the speaker the website, details yeah. and uh, their uh, organizations. 
Uh, the easiest way is to look uh, for them on LinkedIn uh, because both uh, Claudia and Mohammed are on link are on LinkedIn, and I believe they're open to yeah. be contacted through that platform. Yeah. And if uh, you don't find it, uh, reach out to us, and we will try to put you into touch with them. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. We hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, Comex AI conference. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, audience. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Claudia. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.